it. Um, some somewhere along the way, I just got grateful and I got lax. And you know, now I'm I'm challenging that and going for you know for forward the rest of my life. I am challenging the just be grateful and deal with it yeah. mentality. Yeah. I love I'm being, it. You're because you're gonna wake so many people up. <laughs> you're gonna you. wake so many people up because a lot of us are just thank you, thank you. No, no, you don't have to. I love what you said earlier. You said. I need to learn to accept the gifts. When people give me something, just say thank you and don't feel bad about it. You know, there's so many of us that have, we've been so preconditioned, right? And it's so hard to get out of that mindset. So I really love what you're doing with this book alone, the title alone, I'm telling you. I said, oh my God, I can't wait to talk about this. What are we talking about, grateful and greedy? Oh, so we doing both today. We'll have my cake and eat it too. All right, let me, let me learn a little something from this. I love yeah, it. I'm hoping that 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 a lot of people share that reaction. I, I knew once I played the two, um, you know, put the two together that that nobody people would be like, I knew it would be a conversation starter because for sure. sometimes so limited. We're like, there's no way those two work interchangeably. There's no way they work hand in hand. You got to be either or. So I'm excited about the conversations that is going to yeah. start. So. So many. Oh, my God. I can see events coming out of this. All kinds of greatness. So I'm really very happy. Super excited for you. Your your story alone is so very interesting. I mean, you went through so many dynamics and we're talking about things that you encountered that you would you imagine that people went through maybe 20, 30 years ago. It's still happening today. I yes. mean, that was really intense. I mean, for you to be a, we're talking about a coach at a school. You had parents that were waiting for you after games. It's crazy. Yes. Can you imagine <laughs> surviving the neighborhood, never being in a fight, and at your job? Right. I'm at my job. You and I remember that they made me wait until the crowd dispersed. So the lady kind of had the crowd going. She was kind of holding up the door. I remember mm -hmm. that they never forced her to leave. They never encouraged her to go ahead and walk out the door. And I. I actually got walked out by the police for my protection, but I was, mm -hmm. I really was, can you, you know, can you imagine staying out of trouble with the law? And the one time I'm escorted out the police is for my actual own safety. Protection. And I, yeah. wasn't the I wasn't the aggressor. I wasn't cursing. Um, I was hurt. I was really, hurt. really hurt. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it opened up your eyes and understanding where we really stand in today's world. This is crazy. Oh, it oh it did, I, and yeah. and that that set, you know it was it was sad, but I was motivated. I was, mm -hmm. but I need I used my mo I I decided I needed to use my motivation and that energy in another space. When it had happened before, I was like, I'm still gonna be here. I'm a, I'm gonna be yeah. better than my peers. Y'all not gonna tell me I'm not doing this anymore. My, you know, my thought process was limited. It was like, wait a minute, I don't need to 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 get stressed out and have a stroke trying to have a seat at their table. Cause it, there, once I get to their table, their values don't even match with mine. Their integrity don't even match. Why? Well, I don't want to be a part of this anyway. I'm gonna go build something. Um, you know, build my own thing, and I get to write my own mission statement. I get to develop my own values. It's yeah. gonna be. Exactly it's going to be exactly what I represent, you know, and, and be able to influence people that look like us, that look like you, that represent also low income areas. People, like you said, they don't have the resources. I think that, you know, you're coming at this at a different angle that needs to be addressed, period, you know. And so, I mean, as a lot of these um, upper echelon schools, they only cater to the well-established, financially prepared individual and families. And there's so many, as we know, really good, smart, intelligent, athletic students that just simply don't have the same legging or the same level of influence or ability to access resources, simple resources. So we really do. I think a lot of us never really think about that, how important it is to have someone like you go back to that community and fuel in positivity, motivation, mental strength. I heard you. I was like, whoo, this woman is powerful. I love it. We all need it. Our children need it. Our future needs it. Joshua gave you the fist. <laughs> it. It's just, it's just, oh my God, this, 
This is like, you're awesome. That's all I'm going to say. And when you told me that you needed a, a cop to escort you out of a game, it just made me think about Ruby Bridges, the little girl who had to be walked into the schoolhouse during the times of, um, you know, desegregation just to go to school. I mean, oh, I'm cheating. You know, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother show. It is. <laughs> well, my, next, my next question is to you, um, how long did it take you when you decided to write your book? How long did it take you to write it? And did you tell anyone when you started your journey, when you said, you know what, I'm going to write this book. You know, I'm going to do Grateful and greedy. At the time, you said grateful or greedy, but yeah. in those moments of inception, did you discuss this path with anybody? So I, I thought about. Well, I knew one of the services I wanted to add is I want to go speak to high school kids. And after some research, some of my mentors said a great way to get in that space is to write a book, um, and it, you know it gives credibility to what you're saying. So I was like, okay, okay, you know. Do I have the time, whatever? Can I write a book? Who writes a book? Like, that's really ambitious. That's bold. And we got sent home for COVID from Prairie View. Um, they sent us to work from home. My mentor, I, I saw an ad he had on Instagram, and he said, everybody's got a book in them. And it it, it just really resonated with me, and it, it reaffirmed to me that you you can write a book. You know what I mean? You, you you you're able to write a book. Your story is relevant. It is needed. Um, you got something to offer people. Um, and I thought about I didn't want my experience to be in vain. One of the reasons I, I was scared to walk away from coaching because it took me 10 years to be good at it. We had won, but in, in those 10 years, I knew volleyball in and out. I could teach somebody who was way behind their peers. I could catch them up. Um, yeah. I had developed the drill book. I all this stuff. I didn't. I spent thousands in professional development. I spent. I had given volleyball ten full years, like high school. I did college camps. I did free camps. I did travel ball. I'm talking the entire year. So ten years. I said, "What do I do with this knowledge? This information?" Yeah. Picked up some stuff there. What can I do with it? Um, all the lessons. So I said, Hey, I can put these in a book. Somebody's got to get used because my whole reason for going into that was for impact, and it can't be for not. I have suffered, I'm you know, I'm hurt, I've got a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of PTSD. Um, mm -hmm. but it can't be for not. So, anyway, we go home. I start his program, it was designed for you to write up and publish a book in 90 days. And oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, very. Oh, and I set out to do it. I wrote the first 16. I might have started March 10th. I wrote 16 days in a row, wow. two hours in the morning, one hour throughout the day. I taught my daughter, play with her and did another two hours in the evening while I watched her play outside with the neighbors. I had the laptop in my lap. 16 straight days. I really, really tired. Needed a break. Um, yeah. And I think I finished writing. Um, I finished writing in about four months and then it started to go through the editing process. So um, I was, you know, two months outside of my goal, which I think, you know, I underestimated um, what it does to you mentally and emotionally. Um, my daughter, she she's a high engagement person. She like she doesn't like to do the tab or anything. She wants to talk to me. She wants you. Yeah. <laughs> she wants me. So yeah. have and do that then maintaining balance with her going to do things fun things with her getting some some air you know fresh air going to see my mom hanging out with my siblings um doing stuff with my niece and nephews i wanted to still do all of that and get it done because you know i'm redefining winning then i've got to have balance so um I literally beat myself up that i didn't do it in the 90 days for like a week because that's just who i am i'm still getting out of that no, oh, that was an athlete too. I forgot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that just adds to it. Yeah. You say regular people do it in 90 days. You <laughs> MVP, you need to do it <laughs> in yeah. 80. What are you talking about? Right. Not, not 150. <laughs> right. Um, so I finished it and it was a great experience. I um 
I uh, lost my grandmother who raised me December 18th. So me and my, my siblings talked about theirs before BC, which my grandma's name is Connie, before Connie's death. And then, you know, AC after Connie's death. And uh, I feel like my life has been broken into two two parts. And it just so happened that me making a career change, you know, pivoting, still being in sports, but pivoting and her death coincided. I knew that it was a moment I needed to take advantage of. Um, I knew something, something's brewing yeah. here, something special here. It mm -hmm. seemed perfect timing to go and talk about um, my 34 years and what I learned and what I picked up, what I put down. The timing about it felt amazing. It felt it, it felt right. Um, and so I just kind of I was going to do it. And I looked up, I told my brothers in March, I'm in a group chat with my brothers and my mom. And I said, in June, I'm going to be a published author. And they all was like, we know you will. You, right. We know you will. <laughs> um, I was really, um, my grandmother about two years ago, um, she just kind of told me over lunch. She was like, I never worried about you uh, finishing stuff. She's like, you always finish what you start. So once I started, I was like, I got to finish. <laughs> yeah, it's just in you. I love yeah. it. I love it. So let me ask you, um, you gave one example of one challenge that you faced along your, your journey so far. And um, I just want to know if there were any additional challenges that you faced and encountered as you were trying to finish this book. I noticed you said, you know, you had to spend time with your daughter. That's a given, you know, and you also had to spend time with your, your family and friends and have that balance. But were there any additional challenges to your journey in writing your book? Did you ever hit any, um, what do they call it, writer's block moments where it's like, ah, I just don't know what else to put in this book. You know what I mean? I hit a writer's block when it got to my childhood before eight. Um, I think somehow I subconsciously um, blocked out our time before that. It was a little bit rocky. Uh, we were with our mom and then we we were we had to be taken away from her and given to my grandparents because she was having some challenges. So I actually did not recall the details. My younger brother had to tell me. So I kind of in the group message, hey, can you remember anything about that day? Or hey, can you remember um, what do you think of when you think of our dad? So I had a huge memory block, huge block. Wow. Um, I could not remember anything prior to that. Um, so that was that was challenging. That was emotional. I hated I had to even go there with them and ask them, but I did and they gave me some clarity. I wanted to be transparent and I did. I wanted to be transparent with my story and write about my challenges. I, what I didn't want to do is bash anybody, because right. that that's not what winning is about for me. This book, you know, I didn't. That's not my goal. So it was a challenge in writing the stories and writing my truth uh, in a way that wasn't me bashing somebody. So I struggled with that because I came from a dysfunctional situation. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I wanted to tell that truth or that that wouldn't or, you know, I wasn't going to be able to help anybody if I did it because um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the people who grew up like me. I need to tell the truth. They need to know what it what it really looks like and what I was able to overcome. So telling the truth, um, being transparent about the peaks and the valleys when it was really, really good and it was really, really bad. Um, what was my other challenge? Um, Constantly I, mean, I can really tell that this was a challenge because I see you kind of looking down like I need yeah. to that's that this is such a real moment right now. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 So um probably just only being seven or eight months removed from uh my grandmother's death and knowing that um my foundation um who I have become was because of the principles and the values that she and my grandfather instilled in me. Um, I knew that that I was gonna have to revisit that. And um, that was that was emotional. But other, th other than those things, it was therapeutic to get it out on paper. 
one of the things I had to do, and I talk about this in my conclusion or epilogue, is if I was going to give these lessons, these nuggets, I had to reconcile what I thought about my childhood or the raising that I got. Did I think it was bad? Did I think um, I was um, somehow slighted? Did I think this was wrong or that was wrong? And and any shoulda, coulda, woulda. I should have been, you right. know, I should have been provided this and I should have got this. And if this would have happened, I could be this person or I had to reconcile all of that into what I think um, or how I think my raising affected me. And um, in different parts of my life, different phases in my adulthood, I remember just being like, dang, I wish I'd have knew that. You know, I wish I knew more about relationships. Look, you me know, every I, day. Me every yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> I wish somebody would have told me, maybe I avoid that eight year, mm -hmm. you know, relationship. Maybe, you know, I wish I had better financial literacy. Um, uh, I wish this family secret would have been told to me sooner. I wish I knew uh -huh. this or I knew that. Yep. Um, and, and so I had, I had to, I had to decide what I thought of my raising and how it had affected me. And uh -huh. at the end of the day, I still think it was great. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was great. I think my grandparents had an idea of what they of what it looked like to be successful, and they helped mold me, and they uh, mold me and give me those values, and um, helped me get opportunities and supported me in a way that I could end up being successful. I, I think the great woman that you are today. Come on now. Everybody that's out here, give my hand clap. We can't hear you, but it's <laughs> amazing. And I really feel your story right now. I feel your truth. And it takes a brave person and it takes a person the real humility to not point any fingers, even in you know the valleys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Kudos to you, your maturity, you. your 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 financial literacy. You know what I mean. Your journey to it—it's amazing. You know, because we again, what I said earlier, we're not all starting at the same baseline. No, so indeed. to hear your story is impactful. It's so influential. It's so you just full. You're just a ball of energy to me. Good <laughs> energy. And I'm serious that our children need to always have someone like you. That is pumping that positivity into them, even when they don't have it at home. You know. Thank you so much. So, from what I get from you, your support system seems like it's your family. Am I right? It is. I, I, there's. Uh, I'm in two group messages. Uh, one with my siblings and my mother, um, and they're supportive. My, my older brother's an entrepreneur for the last 25 years. My other two brothers, uh, great family men. Great, 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 great fathers. My mother has lived, uh, I guess, three lives. Amazing, amazing will. Um, between those people, there's there's no way you, you can't wake up motivated. Um, you know, if you're down and we when we say good morning or whatever we say, um, somebody's gonna come with something motivational. You're like, hey, let me get out the bed. Let me let me go do this. If you if you want to cry, you want to. Um, just say, hey, today's not great. You can say that. You're not going to get jumped on. You're not going to get criticized. Super duper supportive. And then my friend group, my friend Ebony and V, we talk all day, every day. V's a gym owner here in Houston. Ebony is a engineer, both amazing, ambitious, have been my friends since college. We're basketball teammates. Between those seven people, um, amazing you know, crazy support. Um, awesome. Really I can feel it. I can feel yeah. it on this show. <laughs> Let's yeah, some they, have they have popped in and out the show. And I, uh, I think so. I, I'm super. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I wanted to do everything on my own. And I wasn't I, I didn't um, discuss openly things I was struggling with. And I really hate that. It caused me a lot of heartache. But now I'm super duper uh, transparent. Like, hey, y'all, I woke up 
and I am super sad today. You know, I miss my grandma. I miss this or I'm unmotivated. Um, I am a lot better with doing that. And we're better. My siblings are better with that, expressing themselves. My friend group is better with talking about what we're struggling with. Um, so we, we're all better for each other. And I'm so excited about, you know, where those relationships, how they've evolved. So that's amazing. So let me ask you something a, a little bit about your expertise. Um it, you know, do you have any advice for anybody that's seeking financial growth and freedom? They may not be in the best, you know, situation right now. Pandemic for a lot of people have stripped away what little we had to wash away in the wind. So what kind of motivation could you give people um, in terms of their own personal research to any new job opportunities that you may have to offer? If you could repeat that as well. Um, mm. Anything come to mind? I would just I would I would say this. Everybody has some unique skills that they already they possess and you have skills you've learned. You need to be creative with figuring out how you can transfer those skills to something that makes money. Um, I think the people that are doing that are winning right now. You know, yeah. somewhere along the way, you've acquired some skills doing something that you know what I mean? Be creative. <laughs> You know, and and really, really, you know, research those things um, and find out how you can use those skills to make money. And I think that's what I'm doing as a coach and an athlete. What what skills that I acquire that I can go into another realm and make money for my family? Um, I can speak to financial freedom. When I left my when I left teaching. I didn't apply for another job. I knew grit and grind was not going to pay the bills. I did not know what I was going to do, but I knew I was done with that. Um, but my friend called me to come assist at Prairie View. My teammate was the head coach and she, uh, she and I were friends. The salary was half. It was half. It was a huge break. You know, I had no idea what I was going to do. It was half. I have not struggled financially since making that decision. Um, the, the th things just seem to work out. When I started writing my book, I received a random cash app. It was like a hundred bucks. I text my my friend. I said, "I think you accidentally sent somebody uh, sent me a hundred dollars." She was like, yeah. "No, that's yours." When I was writing my book, one of my other girlfriends, she's a nurse, her name's Felicia, my best friend. She's like. I'm so tired. I can't read. You know, I can't. I know I haven't caught up with you a lot. I know you're writing a book. Let me let me pay for something. Um, my other home girl, she can do um, marketing and pub. She's she she's big in marketing, um, and she's like, hey, let me do your marketing. And I'm, I'm getting tongue tied. Let me do your marketing. She literally volunteered her services. I said, hey, what is this going to cost? Can we see the poster behind you? Is Did she do the poster that's behind you? No, she did not do that. But, that's that's what I but yes. because I took a step, um, what did Chris Rock said, when you when your car breaks down on the road, people will drive by. But if you they see you pushing your car, they'll get out and help. Um, yeah. I was vocal about my ambitions and the things that I wanted to do. Um, my friends and I was passionate about being able to be hands on and raise my daughter. Um, so they took on my dreams and goals with me and was like, hey, I'm going to get in there with you, give a financial contribution. Um, and it just you put it out there in the atmosphere. You tell God what you want to do. Um, and if he agrees, then he makes ways for you. And that's my marketing and publicist, Alicia Marie. She put, oh, wow. And uh, like I said, one of my friends is like, she volunteered to be my publicist. My other friend's like, I'll pay her. I mean, these are my friends. I'm not asking because they know I won't ask. And they're yeah. like, I want to be on board with what you're doing because uh, the passion and how you're pursuing it. Um, so I think letting people know that, hey, my goal this year is financial freedom. I, you know, my goal this year is to, um, what was the, uh, to do better with my fam finances, to save more, to do this. Um, so speaking into existence and do not limit yourself. There's special gifts, talents you have that 
can make money. <laughs> yes, I love it. So we we're down to our last two questions for people who are wondering. I just had to ask. This is just so interesting. But uh, what new projects can we look forward to in year 2020? Yay. Yay. So before Christmas, I talked about my daughter is was a preemie. She was born 11 weeks early. And she is amazing. Um, you can't tell that she is a preemie. She is off the chain. Uh, and her life is very colorful. She's in tennis. She's in the gymnastics. She can Aww. whistle. She can whistle. So the irony, a kid born with an underdeveloped lung mm -hmm. and other organs, she was two pounds, 14 ounces. One of her special talents is whistling. So uh, we're going to do a children's book called Zuri's Magic. My uncle. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you're pulling my heart strings right now. <laughs> my uncle calls her Zuri Magic it, it, from out of the gate since she was born. He's like, I don't know. It's just something about this kid. Mm -hmm. So we're going to title it Zuri's Magic. And it'll be a book that will inspire parents of premature babies that their kid will not only live a normal life, but an extraordinary life. Yeah. So the book will be loosely based on all the cool things she loves to do, all her special talents. And I, I really, I hope to partner with, uh, with an organization um, that, that supports NICU patients. I, I'm hoping that we can have a lot of impact with that because I didn't know a lot about it because I didn't expect to, to be a parent to a preemie. And one of my girlfriend's sisters reached out to me with a great support system, came and sat with me, gave me special tips and uh, all types of support. And I'll always appreciate her for that. Her name is Kirschlin Mayhorn. And I remember being um, like hoping that one day I could do that for somebody else. Um, so I'm excited about that, what that book will, will do for a parent who has a kid in the NICU because it's a very trying time. I mean, uh, going to see yeah. your kid in the NICU and watching how it tore up families, the stress, the expenses. Uh, it's a very unique situation that's not talked about um, as often as you would think. So I'm excited about that book. I'm hoping we can get it out for Christmas so it can be a stocking stuffer. Oh, um, I'm excited <laughs> for you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So and, without, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And then the last thing I'm really excited when writing this coming from a coach background, I'm really excited about um, doing some uh, being a right and inspiring more coaches and ex college or pro athletes to tell their stories, especially um, people of color. Uh, you know, one of my big things is we go into it to, to leave impact and a legacy. And I don't want anybody else you know, talking about my legacy. I want to write my, or writing my legacy. I know. Listen, I you said you want to tell your story. I want to tell <laughs> my story. And it needs to be beyond that I went and, you know, scored a bunch of touchdowns, shot a bunch of points. You know, yeah. it needs to be beyond that. So I really, really, my, my mission this next year is to encourage coaches of color to write you know, their own stories to really take charge of what impact, what legacy they leave. Because uh, I don't I don't want my legacy to have anything to do with, with, with wins and losses. Right. Um, and I love coaching a winner I, and I still coach. But, it, it you know, it means nothing to me um, if I'm not making real impact. So I'm going to be encouraging coaches and athletes. Right. Your own. Somebody needs to hear your story from your mouth out of your mouth so that's i'm devoting the next year to that i'm very excited about that um so that's that's it for projects awesome 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 Woo! you've been through a lot <laughs> and i'm so glad you were able to put it all in your book please tell people where they can find your book where they can go make take take look purchase a couple of copies give them to yeah. your people for christmas you know because the holidays are coming oh so yeah. let them know what your website is any links anything that you want the people to know about please okay. give them the information okay. now so my website for the book is tamika newman.com um 
You can follow me on IG at Tamika.r.newman underscore GGA. And uh, my business, Grit and Grind Athletics, I have a Facebook business page and it's just Grit and Grind Athletics. So all three of those places uh, you can find me um, and follow my journey. Yes, please, guys. She's amazing. Thank you so much for choosing the Sisters Talk podcast. It was a true pleasure and delight to interview today, interview you today, and also know, to know a little bit more about your history, your background, your beautiful daughter, Zuri. I mean, you have a lot of amazing things coming your way. So I can't wait to watch your journey. <laughs> thank thank you so much for having me and giving me a chance to tell my story. Um, and I hope, you know, your listeners found value, got something out of anything that I said. Um, just thank you for having me. Absolutely. So for everybody that's still listening, clips of her video will go up on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. They're going to be dispersed everywhere. People that are on my page, they already know how I get down. So you guys are going to be seeing clips of this interview shortly this evening. Anybody who's new to our channel today, make sure you download the Sisters Talk podcast app. It's now available on Apple stores and Google Play. And again, thank you, Miss Tamika Newman. Good thank luck you on everything so that you're doing. All right, guys. Um, have a blessed day. Well, go ahead. You too. Bye-bye. All right, and we'll see you guys next Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. as we talk about our next move. So we're going to be talking about politics. Get ready to light up the comment section because you know it's going to go down. All right, thank you guys for tuning into the Sisters Talk podcast. You guys have a blessed evening.